Okay, in this part of the uh, tutorial series with Revit 3ds Max, uh, I want to kick off now into the lighting. So we've gone over some basic materials, how to link the data through, how to make changes when you want to link it through, and now I want to uh, use V-Ray to render my scene. So in the previous tutorial, I did uh, a flick to, uh, to V-Ray. I'm just going to show you how I did that. So it was V-Ray, and uh, make sure that your uh, material assignments are all V-Ray, so that's all done. And uh, the great thing that the guys at Chaos Group have done is they've started to um, add these um, expert default and advanced settings here. So if you want to turn on expert, it will just bring up a few more menus for you. Um, there's uh, global switches, you can turn all this on, frame buffer. Uh, I'm going to leave it all on the default settings for now just to take you through uh, some basic settings to get a, a decent render out. Uh, at the moment it defaults to the progressive um, image sampler. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it on that uh, for now. And then um, environment we won't uh, touch on today. We'll just uh, look at the color mapping. Color mapping here is uh, Reinhardt. Um, if I just move that up. So I just go to advanced. I do apologize about the background noise. There is some work <laughs> being done. So let me just pause for a sec. No, no, need to pause. Okay, so uh, what we have is, is Reinhardt, and there are other ones to choose from here. Numerous other users will use different types of uh, color mapping, and uh, I'm just going to leave that as is. We won't need to do anything with the camera at the moment. GI, turn on uh, the GI, this is the global illumination. And at the moment it's set to brute force and light cache. I'll leave that on the defaults as it is. We won't get into caustics, that's for um, uh, light passing through glass. And then the settings here, we're just gonna leave it as is. So let's go to our common and uh, choose a output size. I like to work with some of the sizes that are here. You can put in your own uh, pixel dimensions as required. Uh, the IMAX one is quite good. I'm gonna choose a 1024 by 751. For speed, um, you can just start off with the, the, the highest amount of pixelations being say 600, um, and this will just do the same proportions, it just, just helps with doing the first test render. So uh, one last thing before you run that rendering engine, I'm just going to go to Alt W to bring up all my screens, change that uh, light from being a mental ray sun to a view ray sun, um, and just go yes it's going to load that uh, view ray into the environment map. Um, I'll just go yeah, and then uh, we don't need to do anything with the skylight, so I'm just going to turn that off. And uh, the other thing to look at here is just go to your environment. You can hit the eight, and that will just show that it's got a default sky in there at the moment. There is a mental ray exposure control here. Um, I'm just going to turn that off for now. We don't need that. And uh, let's just do a uh, a render but we don't have a, a camera. So what you want to do is you can um, place a camera in the scene. We do have, uh, I think I had a camera, which I had him before, we just got control C to, to show that. At the moment, it is a, uh, a camera that's come across from um, mental ray. You, you want to use um, a physical camera for better controls here. So I'm just going to go to my create button, go over here to cameras, and we'll go and use physical. There are there's a V-Ray one here. The other dome camera it doesn't show the old cameras anymore. Um, so you can still use a physical camera. So I just go physical camera. Uh, another thing to note here with uh, with the V-Ray, um, there is an option to show a um, a V-Ray menu. Um, and I just for the love of me can't remember. There it is V-Ray toolbar. Right click. Uh, you can bring up the V-Ray menu here, which is quite uh, quite easy. So you can go physical camera, and that will bring up a standard physical camera. So that was something uh, new in, um, in V-Ray this year. It's not um, having the old camera, which you can create. So uh, without further ado, physical camera, and uh, I'm just going to uh, point and shoot. And you can see here, I want to uh, move it up. So I just right click and move, move up to location. Hit C for camera, right click, select camera target, and just move that up manually to, to where I want it to be. So at the moment, uh, we just zoom in. The camera's roughly in the same location. 
but the um, uh, the um, focal length is different. So I want to put that on 18. 18 is about as wide as you want to go. And I'll just uh, move it to roughly the right, the right location where the other camera was. Select that camera type. So you can you can play around with this, and you can even um, right click here if you want to put in the exact x y z coordinates, depending on um, how precise you want to be, or you could align the cameras together and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so now with that um, camera selected, um, we have an exposure gain here of six. I'm just going to leave it on the default for now, and we're going to hit the uh, render production, and uh, we're going to get a default render here. And you can see it's building the light cache. It's looking really bright because it is set to 6. So what it's doing is it's done that first pass. And now it's doing the uh, progressive passing. So this is something a little bit different. You can hear my computer making a bit of noise here in the background. So this is a slightly type of uh, rendering progression. Uh, I will cancel, cancel it just for the sake of time because you can already see that I'm getting some real-time feedback on my image being too bright. So what I want to do here is turn off my exposure gain, turn up my exposure gain to, uh, to 12. Uh, if you want to know more about this sort of stuff, um, you can look online about uh, camera exposures. If it's an outdoor space, you set it to 16. There's like a sunny 16 rule. Um, anywhere between 12 and 16 is good for outdoor spaces. I'm going to use 12 uh, for this this case. I'll keep it on progressive, um, just gives you real time feedback and we'll just render that again. And now you're going to see the difference. So um, because I'm sort of familiar with how much light uh, or how, much, how um, much exposure should be coming to the camera, I can sort of start to understand uh, what the settings should be. Now if it was a much darker space, I would probably use 6 or even 4. If it was a much brighter space, I would go up to um, 15 or 16. So here we are with um, the new progressive uh, rendering. So it doesn't do like the bucket passes, it does like all these uh, small passes. And you can get some real time feedback on how that render is going to look. Now you can see um, my shower head is orange. Um, I can just change the numbers in the uh, submaterials to flip that around. Um, that was an error of me changing it. But I'm getting some, some nice results here with, with the lighting and uh, I'm getting some real time feedback before um, that render is even finished. So, so with that, that's our render. It took about a minute. Uh, I'm going to uh, stop this part of the video and I'll start on a new one to do a bit of a deeper dive in rendering engines. That's just a quick snapshot on how to uh, do some renders inside of Max with some of the default settings.